async, curly braces, lap bang, do bang, computation expression, match bang, return bang. You have no clue what this means, but you want to work with F sharp and async? Then this series is for you. Hi there, welcome back to the Dev All. I am Roman and today and in this video series we are going to talk about working with asynchronous workflows in F Sharp. In this first episode I will give you an introduction why I think it is nice to work with those asynchronous workflows and these asynchronous computation expressions and I will give you a short introduction into the theory behind it. So not how it is implemented but how you can actually use those asynchronous workflows. In the second episode, we are going to build something together where we can actually make use of all this stuff. And in the third episode and the final episode of this small series, we are going to talk about how to build functions that can actually allow us to put those asynchronous workflows into the nice F-sharp pipelines. So we will implement functions like map async and bind async. This is possible because async is a monad. Well, um, yes. So I would be very happy if you would follow this series. So if you want to get notified when I put up new episodes of this series or of other things, if sharp related, just give me a subscribe. Would be really happy about it. So without further ado, los geht's. All right. To get started with all this, let me just show you an example that, in my opinion, shows pretty nicely the power of asynchronous operations and async workflows in F Sharp. So our goal is to actually download a couple of websites from the internet. So in this case, it's being Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and Yahoo. And we have a pretty standard function that is actually able to do this. So what we are doing here is we're creating a web request. All this stuff is basically stuff from the .NET framework. So nothing too fancy in here. So we're creating a, a web request based on a URL. And then we are asking for the response of the web request. And we get the response stream of the web request and create a new reader for this stream. And then in the end, we just read this reader to the end. So what we have is all the HTML from the website that we are pointing to by giving it the URL. And normally we would just return the HTML. I commented this out in here. So fetch URL is actually not returning anything. It's just a function that returns unit. The reason is that we don't want to ignore this now and later when we do all this async stuff and it gets a bit more complicated or a bit more polluted. I don't want this here. So the only thing that is important here is that we are actually just printing out that we have finished downloading this URL just let's go through this. So what we are doing is we take all the sites that I've just mentioned and then I'm mapping over this list and each site or each URL is fed into the fetch URL function and so we are actually one by one downloading all the URLs. And this little time thing up here is just for the F sharp FSI or F sharp REPL. So this allows us to switch on an interactive timer so that we can see how long it takes to actually download all this stuff. So when we do this and actually execute all this, we see that it is downloading all the websites one by one and it takes about two and a half seconds to download all this stuff. So let's have a look how all this would change when we would try to actually download all the URLs in parallel. So our goal is not to download them one by one, but to take the whole list and try to download them in parallel. And to be able to do this, in order to be able to do this, we have a new function here called fetch URL async, which looks pretty similar to the fetch URL function but it has some key differences. And the main one is this async block. The whole function body was wrapped into here. And what this async block is doing is that the whole return value changes. The whole return value of the function actually changes from a unit in this case to an async of unit. So this is in the end kind of an object that can be run later asynchronously. 
So the difference now is that we are not actually calling or, or running our whole function. It's just a description what should happen when we are running our async block within our system. And to be able to do this, we need to return from those async blocks. And again, I have commented this stuff out here. So normally we would return the HTML here. And if we do this, if we, if we comment this out, we will see that we will not return an async of unit anymore, but an async of string. So normally in F-sharp, we don't have this return keyword because the last expression in the function is always returned. But if we want to return from these so-called computation expressions from these async block, we need to use the returns. I will talk in length about them later. So don't be afraid if, if you don't understand this now. So the other big difference is that we don't use this use here anymore for the get response, but we are using the so-called use bang. So it's a use with an exclamation mark. So again, use, what does it do? It's similar to let, but it's used to actually bind a value that can be disposed, that implements the .NET framework iDisposable interface. And if we use the use keyword instead of let, the resource is actually disposed when the function scope ends. But now we don't use use anymore. We use use bang. And we change the function from request.getResponse to request.AsyncGetResponse. And the reason is that the request.AsyncGetResponse, if we like it here, does not return a web response, what the normal request get response function returns. It actually returns an async of a web response. So this async get response is just another description of something that would happen. And what the use bang now is actually doing is pretty much telling the F sharp compiler or the F sharp runtime to await this asynchronous call. So what this use bang is actually doing is that it allows us to wait for the response of the request without blocking the current thread. So the operating system is actually able to switch to another thread that is waiting for something to do while we are waiting for the response of the web request. So when we actually call this function now, we can use a function from the async module, which is called parallel. So what we are doing here is we use, again, the list map, but this time we use it with the fetch URL async function. So now we have a list of those async objects, and then we use the async.parallel function that is putting all those asyncs together into one async that can be run parallel. And then in the end, to start the process of actually running all those asyncs in parallel, we need to call the async.run synchronously function. And when we do this, we see that this is actually much faster because now we don't need to wait for one website to, to be downloaded before we can start with the next one. All of them are actually downloaded in parallel because every time the compiler finds this use bang or this bang syntax, it can hand off the control to another thread and actually do something asynchronously. So let's do some theory. Boring? I hope not, but it's necessary. The easiest way in F -sharp to work with those asynchronous operations is to actually use those async computation expressions. And this is why we are going to go through the theory behind these computation expressions, how to use them, not how to implement them, but how to use them so you can start working with those asynchronous operations. So the basic block to actually build these asynchronous operations is this async block. So this is a so-called computation expression, and everything that is wrapped into those async blocks is returning an object that, that describes an async operation. And this is the big difference when you're working with .NET task. When you're working with .NET task and you do something with task, you already have started task. 
the asynchronous operation has already started. This is the big difference with the async computation expression. An async computation expression just wraps some computations within an async object. So it's just the description of an operation. It needs to be started manually. And the nice thing about this is that we can later on actually work in pipelines and work with those async operations, map over them, bind them, filter them, whatever we want to do with them. And the big difference when working inside those computation expressions is the so-called bang syntax. This is what we have seen with the use one in the fetch URL example. So a bang is just an exclamation mark. And we just say bang when we talk about those things. And to remember for asynchronous operation, is that if we have a bang, we always work with an async. So this is some rule of thumb that you can think of if you're not sure how to work with this. If you have a bang, you work with an async operation. You can also use async operations without having a bang, but then you're not actually awaiting them. Then you're not actually doing anything with them. So if we have normal let expressions or use expressions, so without the bang, we normally don't work with asyncs in here. So the most basic one is the let keyword. So with the let keyword, we can just bind some value or the return value of a function call to some identifier, in this case x. So it's just a normal value binding. When we use the let bang, we can also have a value or a function call that returns an asynchronous operation. And what F sharp is doing then is that it awaits the async to complete. So it hands off the control to another thread, to another thing to do, and it awaits this to complete. And when it completes, the operation is resumed and we can go on from there. And this actually allows us to write asynchronous code that looks pretty synchronous. So we don't have continuations in there. We don't have callbacks in there. It just looks like this. And this is pretty similar to an await, async await in JavaScript or C sharp. And all this stuff is going through with all the other keywords. So we have the same with the use keyword in here. So the use keyword, as I just said, is a normal value binding with automatic dispose when we leave the scope of the function. And the use bang syntax is pretty much the same, but it awaits the async to complete. And later on, we have the automatic dispose. And then we have other things as well. We have the do keyword. The do keyword is used normally for functions that return unit, so that have no real return value. And the do bang syntax actually allows us to await a function that returns an async of unit. So we can still wait for it to complete. It's not fire and forget, but still we don't have a return value. So we don't bind a value to an identifier. And then there is the match keyword which you normally know for pattern matching. And this is the pretty new one. So you can also say match bang. So it awaits the async to complete. And then we do normal pattern matching. Before we had this in F sharp, we had to first use let bang, await this and do, and do a normal match. So this is just some more syntactic sugar. It's just really nice to have this match bang syntax. So we can just put some asynchronous operation in there and await the result. And the last one, and maybe a bit confusing one sometimes, is the return one. So to actually be able to get out of those async blocks, async computation expressions, we need to use the return keyword. And again, there is the return and the return bang. So when we use the normal return keyword, what the computation expression is doing is it takes this value, whatever it is, an integer, a string, or something else, and wraps it in an async. So it takes a normal value and it returns an async of this normal value. And the difference with the return bang keyword is, as I said up here, if we work with a bang, we already work with an async normally, is that when we already have an async, if we just want to return 
the asynchronous operation of another function, for example, then we can just use the return bang keyword. So this tells F sharp not to wrap it again in an asynchronous operation, because otherwise, if we already have an asynchronous operation and we just use the return keyword, we would have an async of an async of a value. And this is most of the time not what we want. So there's also the return bang keyword, which allows us to just return an already asynchronous operation as it is. All right, you finished the theory. Congratulations. So we finished this up here. And in the next episode, we are actually going to build something where we are going to make good use of all the stuff we have just learned. So I hope to see you there. Bye bye and see you soon.